It was 1 a.m. and I was seated in lotus position on my bathroom sink. And, and I got to thinking, you know, we are enveloped with uncertainty. What with the unpredictability of everyday life and electrons having an identity crisis? I mean, wave or particle. I kept thinking, and what if we could use, what if we could harness all of this uncertainty that surrounds us? Wouldn't we be unstoppable? Let's take the air molecules, for example. They are moving so randomly, erratically, colliding with everything that they see. <sighs> Me too, man. My mother's tea lights would know. Imagine if you could harness all of that energy. I, I was mind blown. I jumped off that bathroom sink right then and there, and I could have started writing my PhD thesis when it struck me. I was talking about a fan. Yes, a fan that harnesses the energy of air to evaporate the sweat off of your skin. Dr. Arya Mehta, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's OK, it's OK, because it was then that I decided, if not the power of the winds, I would at the very least use my power to overthink to present to you my adventures and the science that enables us to learn from them. So what's been keeping you down lately? How has your life been treating you? This is about you. So if you're ready, let us together unravel the universe like it's a literary piece. I assure you there will be no rhyme schemes involved. Our lives, our lives are a product of what we are feeding our minds. Like I love to yell at everybody I know, it's all in the mind. And that is why today it is my solemn duty to feed your mind a steaming hot plate of my nanny's cooking. Two years ago, lo and behold, a little, very little, okay, minuscule boy. And it was this deficiency in size that paved the way for so much insecurity, social anxiety, and all of this inner turmoil within me. If I go out today with my family, what if I run into somebody from school? If I wear that shirt, could I look even skinnier? If I comment on that, could people think I'm weird? Do I really have any redeeming qualities? Am I boring? <laughs> One fine day, my dear cousin walked into the room and just mockingly stroked his new beard. And I snapped. All of those foolish self inhibiting thoughts, all of those that I ever had, they were bouncing around my head in that very moment. And I, I was the early universe. Yes, with barrages of particles at war with one another, fighting to exert their dominance. From the empty void, matter and antimatter popping into existence, colliding and annihilating each other. All of those negative thoughts swirling around my head, they were antimatter, annihilating my individuality. But like the early universe, all of a sudden, matter seemed to be making a comeback. I can learn to express myself. Boom. Life is so beautifully random. Boom. I've only ever regretted what I held myself back from doing. What do I have to lose? Boom. Is that my nani's alu paratha? I smell the how, right? One matter particle out of a billion, got that war zone victory. One matter particle out of a billion set the stage for the matter dominant universe that we live in today. It set the stage for everything we've ever known. And like the early universe, in that moment, I decided to focus on what mattered. I decided to focus on me and showing those around me the wonders of life too. Everything else, it anti-mattered. And thus I was born. At the start of this year, I was primed, ready to go. I had all of these dreams to fulfill, so much to do, right? And then we know what came next. The photoreceptors in our eyes can detect light as dim as a single photon. That's one particle of light. We can detect light as dim as a single photon, but I did not see that coming. There I was in lockdown with all of that pent up energy at the breaking point. I wasn't moving forward. I wasn't accomplishing anything. I wasn't conquering the world. What do I do?
what can we do in a situation like that? Well, dynamic equilibrium. Yes, bear with me here. A reversible chemical reaction in which the reactants and the products are producing each other such that they always remain at the same concentration. That's what I was feeling, dynamic equilibrium, of course. My reactants, my products were at the same concentration. <laughs> when you're in a state like that, it's such a struggle to escape, right? You, you feel worthless, you know. You can no longer muster up the motivation to pick up a book or learn an instrument like they keep telling you to. Us humans, we're so fond of balance. We don't realize when we're drowning in it. Yet, all hope is not lost, for we learn in school that one can shatter dynamic equilibrium with a simple change in temperature. The reactants that require heat energy, they absorb it, and suddenly we have more of the products. The yield of the reaction has increased. That's precise, and that's precisely what I did. That's precisely what you can do. I started to heat things up. Not so difficult in Dubai. Online school began, and I began to immerse myself in all of that fresh knowledge coming my way. You know, <clears throat> immerse, just wow. And then I began signing up for everything that crossed my one photon line of sight, be it story writing competitions, hackathons, school podcasts, or even, well, TED Talks. Goodbye, equilibrium. I was in hyperdrive. I was finally making something of myself, and that made all the difference. To quote my dad, I was producing and not just consuming. I was contributing to myself and the people around me, and sometimes that's all we need. One heartfelt push forward into the rapids, and then we let the momentum carry us forward. Hmm. However, all of those commitments they brought and they're continuing to bring their fair deal of stress, anxiety. I mean, now we have a new situation. Are these rapids too much to handle? How am I supposed to give them all my very best? All while leaving myself room to breathe with my friends, my family? Well, what do I say to that? Well, piezoelectricity. Yes, a fascinating phenomena which occurs in certain ceramics such that when you hit them, they release a spark. When you apply stress on them, they release a spark. This is all possible due to the arrangement of the atoms within. So that when you're compressing them, the positively and negatively charged particles become aligned in such a manner that an electric current is produced between them and creating a spark. Huh. When it's time, when it's crunch time, when it's time to tackle your commitments, don't fight the stress. It's not adding to your burdens, it's bringing out your spark. It's taking it out from within you. Amazing, isn't it? When. <clears throat> wow. We could we could keep doing this. Have you ever felt you could thrive under the pressure and you never run short of time? OK, OK, let's keep going. Have you ever felt you were a bad teacher? Yeah, my sister frequently accuses me of this. A T P. Adenosine triphosphate, the energy molecule. The cells in our body, they absorb it from the chemical energy within the food that we eat. This is all stored up and later when we need it, the energy molecule is broken down to release tremendous amounts of energy that fuel our bodily processes. If energy simply floated in and then out of our systems, we would be no different from a rock. There would be no dazzling complexity to any of the life on our planet. And maybe maybe that's what your students are missing. Give them an experience to remember, to store. Build those concepts up so that they can break it down and release that understanding into their long term memory. Oh, I could do this all day. You think you're a bad singer, speaker? <laughs> Poison spot. Yeah. Have you ever heard that the brightest point of a shadow is right at its very center? Yeah, rays of light aren't as straight and parallel as you make them out to be. No, light behaves like waves. And when there's light hitting my back, these waves are spreading out from behind me and then focusing themselves right at the very center to produce a bright spot at the center of my shadow. It looks as if there's light 
passing straight through me, which is so cool. When you speak, when you sing, do you sing from your stomach? Do you speak from your heart? Are you summoning the light, the passion from your poison spot, from the center of your being and shining that ray of brilliance at your audience? It doesn't have to be science. Rule your destiny with the flourish of your paintbrush, the settling of your accounts, or even the relishing of your food. Take your fire, take your area of expertise, be it large or small, and prepare yourself up to the heavens. Make every twist, flip, jump, skip, and slide practically scream you. Live what you're learning. Blaze a path to your dreams and let the embers of the fire you leave behind make a big smiley face. Your smiley face. Thank you for listening. Now get out there and show me what you can do. <laughs>